Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. So, today I'm going to do a little bit of a different thing than I normally do. Normally you see the projects, you see restorations here at Salvage Workshop. But this time, um, I'm going to kind of show you where I find old machines like this. I have a passion for old uh, vintage cast iron machines, whether it be, you know, woodworking, metalworking, you know, you name it. You know, anything from a printing press to, you know, this is a joint or big band saws. Uh, drill presses and so I don't find them probably the conventional way which is you know like marketplace or Craigslist or eBay I find them a lot different so I figured I would kind of show you guys a little bit of how I come into these machines where they come from so I'm gonna take you on this little expedition and we'll see if you enjoy it maybe we'll do some more of them so without further ado let's get to it Picked up a little tow motor, fork truck, for fairly cheap, and it's got that Yale sticker, but it's actually a Caterpillar. It's a Caterpillar tow motor, fork truck. I don't know the exact weight rating or capacity at the moment, but I already took the forks loaded them up but yeah this will be nice to have around the shop we're gonna get this baby loaded
old Black & Decker Turk saw. Unburying. Yeah.
Let's see if Big Joe has the ability to lift this baby off. And for those that are wondering, yes, these were tied down during travel. I just did the back end for theatrical effect.
Look at that beautiful red that this machine used to be. WF and J Barnes Company, Rockford, Illinois, USA. And right here, right there, it says 20 inch drill. So here is the rest of uh, what I brought home. <laughs> Let's get it out and take a look. Okay, so this is the hall. Everything kind of on the floor right in front of these two drill presses. Stuff on the table there other than the vise. I'll go through and show you kind of what I got. So I found another post vise. Looks to be complete. The spring looks good. Don't know the brand if it even has one. It is a Champion Blower and Forge post drill. You would mount it on, you know, a beam in like a blacksmith shop or something. Um, and then basically hand crank this and it would feed down this, this drill. Well, it's missing a good chunk of the top right here. It was cracked off. It says uh, Champion Blower and Forge right here. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I love this, this wheel. I love the look of it. Probably won't ever do anything with it. Maybe I might need some parts for a future project, but this is a flat belt grinder. So you would have a big wheel here or and similar to this one. And basically you would a big flat belt would be run right here in the middle. And it would turn the flat or this uh, shaft basically turning it. And it's missing the base, it's missing Really, I think it's just missing the base. And then you would basically hook up a flat belt or whatever to run it. Not sure what the plan is for it, but it's cool. So this putter <laughs> it has a little bit of an interesting story. Um, it's a potato, I think. And basically, I, I was driving to here to this place and I stopped at... I saw this dumpster, so I whip around, and I don't always stop at dumpsters. Well, if I'm honest with myself, I always, I always stop at dumpsters. Yeah, I do. And I look in there. Anyway, so I stopped. Turned the van off, looked in the dumpster, didn't find much. Thought, found this part, thought it was kind of cool. Went to go get back in the van, and it wouldn't start. It wouldn't even turn over, it just key. Wouldn't do anything. And so I went out, checked the battery, cleaned the terminal, put it back on. Couldn't get anything. Tried to see if there was some other problem. Then I did a quick Google search, and apparently if you don't have the key exactly in the right spot, it can sometimes not recognize that the key's in there. And so I just kind of messed with it a little bit, and it started right up. I mean, it was, I was gonna be, it was gonna be an expensive day if I couldn't figure it out because I was towing a big trailer behind me. But 
ended up figuring it out and got out of there and this putter is uh essentially the the uh memory from that so not really all that important this is just an old milwaukee uh sawzall box it's got i mean some basic stuff in it, it got the original milwaukee sawzall blade guide i just thought the box was cool i love these old milwaukee boxes and so so i grabbed that This is a Niagara bead roller, and it's a number 576. You would clamp it onto a bench here, and then you'd turn this, and right here, it you'd roll in your, your sheet metal, and it would basically create a bead there. And then you got your adjustment screw here. Um, I've got a couple other, I've got another bead roller, and then I've got a bead crimper. So, uh, I found that in one of the buildings. That was kind of cool. I found another Arbor Press. It's a Famco Zero. Um, little, I, I think it's a one ton. Uh, it's exactly the same size as my my little dake that I have that are stored here on the channel. Um, and I plan to, plan to do this as another res restoration project at some point. This is a little, I don't know exactly what it's for. It's a vice slash press thing um if you know what this is used for i'd love to know it's the only thing i can see on it. it says number something zero and it looks like there might have been a badge there at one time but i don't know i thought it was kind of neat so and then here's another item i don't know what it is it's got a uh a the dial here, it's got graduations along here that are kind of barely re readable. It's got this little turn twist knob, and it's got these rollers, and the rollers, rollers are all free. Um, is this some sort of a sheet metal roller? Is it a, a, you know, I don't know. It looks like it fits in the ways of something, like you could mount it on a, on a, a, or a milling machine or a lathe or something. I, I, I don't know. If you know what it is, I'd love to know. I always tend to pick up gears. I, I, I have a fascination with gears. And anytime I find them, a lot of times I don't know what they're for and I don't really even care, or pulleys. I love pulleys. You know, I mean, this is probably off some heavy equipment. It's probably a sprocket for, you know, like a, 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 a track drive system or something. You know, this is probably out of a, oh God knows, who, who knows, who knows who's out of. I found this one cracked in half and I, I thought, you know, that would make an awesome wall hanger or awesome, just a decoration, set it somewhere on the shop. Um, but, yeah, so I don't really buy them because I have a purpose for them, but my plan is eventually to make some art with this kind of thing, so... So I kind of pick it up wherever I can find it. I got this really cool wheel. Not sure what it's off of, but it has this pin that you can pull and it basically changes the, locks it in or unlocks it. And so I plan to repurpose it as a, a really nice gate wheel. One of my gates out here, um, I always have to lift up, and this, I'm gonna fill it with, with foam, basically would make an awesome, you know, uh, wheel for, you know, guiding the gate. So that's why I grabbed that. So I found this slow children playing sign that's barely readable. I thought it was awesome. It's gonna go up here in the shop somewhere. An old double bit ax that says uh, Craftsman on it. Handle seen better days. Got a big old crack there. So I like axes and hammers and mauls. Big old massive monster maul. Maul head. I got another trolley. So this trolley, after I scraped off the orange paint, uh, is a Ryerson steel plate trolley. One ton capacity, bearings, Hyatt. So 
I've got another trolley. I plan to make a either a crane system or a basically I plan to make some sort of a, a you know a way to lift heavy things. I'm not sure if I'm going to incorporate it into my shop here or if I'm going to make it movable. So I picked up this awesome uh, uh, die handle. Uh, it's an old Toledo. It's got three different sizes on it. It's really unique. I don't know who makes the handle. It looks like if I, yeah, it looks like it says Toledo there too. It says Toledo on each of these. But I just thought it was really unique. Cool looking one. So this is a, I don't exactly know what it's called, but you would, you would attach this to a tractor. It's got this spline drive. And then this flat belt allows you to run um, flat belt machinery off of the tractor power. And apparently there's an adapter that you can get for this that basically turns it into a PTO drive so you could run it off of any modern tractor, not just whatever this particular one was set up for. And so I got it because, as you know, I have a lot of flat belt machinery. I don't currently have a tractor. Uh, I have every intention of getting one, and this would make an awesome addition to being able to take it somewhere, or take a piece of machinery, set it up to show people, you know, how old machinery works, or, you know, kind of do demonstrations, or even, you know, do a video and kind of show you guys how it works. So, I don't come into these, <laughs> I've actually I've honestly never come into one of them, and so I figured I'd grab it. So this motor here is a, is a Honda GX, I don't know if it's a 340 or whatever, it's, it's either an 11 or a 13 horsepower motor. It's locked up, and I'm okay with that, I, I don't really care, I paid almost nothing for it. I have one that's in perfect condition, I've opened it up, the insides are great, but I don't have the flywheel, I don't have this cover, and I don't have the recoil. Mine has an electric start module right here, but... Um, I've been needing these and it was, it, to buy them new or even find used ones on eBay is crazy expensive and so I was able to get this motor and it will uh, donate some parts because I plan to put that on some sort of a crazy project or crazy project build uh, at some point. And so that's why, that's why this is here. Okay, now into the tubs. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do them one at a time and we'll kind of go through them and Show you what's in each. All right, so I got a bunch of big old wrenches. An American made. I don't know what sizes each of these are, but I like big wrenches. I cannot lie. So this one, this is a uh, nail puller. You would grab onto a nail like that. And then you would put your boot here and you would basically use it like a slide hammer, essentially, is what it is. And so this one had really good teeth on it. A lot of times they're all beat to heck. I also like American-made quality files. And so a lot of people would think rusty files are garbage. I do not. Some of them are. But I will go through each and every one of these. That's garbage. And I'll clean them up and try and figure out, you know, what, what has teeth, what doesn't, what's salvageable, what's junk. And so I got a ton of files. Next up, I got these old wooden pulleys. I think they're awesome. So I've got this, uh, Craftsman hedge trimmer attachment for your drill. And it's the original box, at least the box top. And basically, you would chuck it into a drill and turn your drill into a hedge trimmer. And I thought it was kind of cool. I'd never seen one before. Got a handle here, and right here's where you chuck into the drill. So. Let's try it. 
somebody losing a finger on this thing. That's why I like it. Got this oil can. Not really an oil can collector so much, but if I think one looks cool, I'll grab it. A lot of older oil cans like these, you know, they would say like uh, multi-purpose and then they'll say motor oil, tractor oil, uh, penetrating oil, transmission oil, steam cylinder oil, washing machine oil, harvester oil, I mean they put any possible oil, fly spray, you know, on here so that, you know, you can use it for anything as if there's no specific purpose made oils for different things. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of a cool can and it's actually probably 90% full. Another set of gears for something. No idea what it is. Thought it was cool. This one. I have two of these. I'm not sure where the other one went. But another gear or sprocket or something for something. I believe this is for hand cranking motors over. Either whether it be an old car motor or something, it would grab into there and then you could crank it and it would help start the vehicle. Here's a unique looking pulley that I found. You know what kind of hammer this is? It's got a, basically, is it a body working hammer? So two flat edges, but at different, you know, one's vertical, one's horizontal. Just an old bit brace. I don't know why I got it, because I've got a ton of them. And I just liked it. There's some sort of a, a big wrench that you could add a socket wrench onto. I got some valves. I just found some random ones laying around. I have a valve grinder. It's a Sioux valve grinder and I don't know how to use it and I don't really want to try anything that matters and so I grabbed these to be able to experiment with that and figure out if uh, figure out how to do it. Um, so and I got you know a drill bit some sort of a square. It might be for I don't know, it could be for a bunch of things. I love these old wrench. It's a piece of square stock. And then this is a Dunlap. I believe this is a mortising attachment for um, a drill press. You would chuck the drill press on here. It's got this collar. You, you attach that there, and then basically it has this square hole with this drill bit here, and you would just plunge it down into it, and I believe that's how it cuts the mortise. It's Dunlap. It's a, it says approved Dunlap tools. So um, I've never seen an attachment like this before, but thought it was kind of neat. I got a bunch of these uh, Lovejoys. This is a chain breaker. Breaker. So you basically put your chain on there and smack it and. Allows you to cut the chain. Got this old hammer. And it must have some sort of like a, a lead insert or different inserts you could insert into it. It's got a two on it, so I'm assuming it's a two pound. Handle's a little bit loose. And it's all covered in oil, you can just see it, but I love old hammers. No idea what this is for. It's basically, looks like it was copper plated at one time. When you turn this, the bottom turns and it's got a hex head there. I don't know if there's okay so I sound I just what is this? Okay it's got different bits. Interesting. A whole bunch of them. 
So if those fit in here, does this come out? Must come out somehow. I didn't know what, I don't know who made it or what it's for, but I haven't seen one like it, so I figured I'd grab it, figure it out later. So if you have any idea what that's for, let me know. I mean, is it for spark plugs or, it's gotta be something where you gotta reach down in, you can't, can't quite get your hand in there with a normal style wrench. Got one of these, uh, basically, machinist clamps. Don't know if it has a brand, don't know if it's a Starrett or anything, but um, I'm going to clean that up later. I, I like having those around the shop. This is a, a gear puller of sorts. Um, I think a lot of these pieces go with it. I grabbed it because sometimes with gear pullers, you never know what you're going to need. brass hammer that I'll put a new handle on. I like these little ones. I've got one. A couple lead hammers. They're always good for working on heavy machinery. Some big old sockets. This wonderful one's been welded, but I mean, might work fine. Some big sockets. This little pulley. Chisels and punches. I think this is a drift of some kind for, I think it's for knocking out things in lathes or big drill presses, old drill presses like the ones I got. And these are a couple chisels, different types, older. Champion Department number 307. Kind of a cool wrench. I like these old the ones with the fingers. They almost look like a, you know, things you punch with. I think brass or bronze pulley or a gear of some kind. These are Crescent Tool Company little miniature shears. Like they've been welded. Didn't see that before. I wouldn't have grabbed them otherwise. This, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, is for certain motors. You put this and it would basically hold the flywheel from basically turning while you're trying to get the nut off. Um, don't know. It's bronze or brass. It says 19167 here, but. Got this big puller of some kind. Basically, it looks like it bolts to something. And then it's got this other end here. I don't know if it's for some sort of a, this is like a spring compressor or, I don't know. Probably very, very specific to whatever it needed or was made for, but I love hooks. I love these old style. Got a bunch in my house in different places. And then, Handles. New old stock. Many of these are Vaughn handles. And they're different different types. And I love hammers. And I've got tons of hammer heads that need handles. I found a ton of them. Can't wait to put all these to use. There's that other sprocket. So, some other big old wrenches. Big T wrench. This is a, uh, a shoe anvil cobbler would put the shoe in there and then they work on the bottoms. Wrenches, old wrenches. There's a whole
bunch of old wrenches just in a pile, and I just kind of grabbed them all and threw them all, threw them all in, and that's what all these are. I haven't even had a chance to look at them yet. Chop your food up with that. Nice and healthy. Might need a tetanus shot after, but nobody's counting. Another little plane, a little scraper, missing the blade, but I love that thing. It's cool. These are uh, arc carbons for heating and cutting with a, you'd have a specific tip for your stick welder. I don't have it. I don't even know if they're, I mean, oxyacetylene essentially took over the, that, the need for one of those. Check this, wiring diagrams for light and power. Let's see. 1937, 1939. Wow. So this is the manual that taught everybody how to put knob and tube wire, wiring in. Can't tell you how much of that crap I've ripped out. That was an old cool book. There's a bunch of these ratchet pipe um, basically dies for one of those uh, rigid or other branded uh, pipe threaders. I don't know the brand of them all. Some of them are rigid. Some of them are nye. I think I've got a nye handle. I've got some other nye ones. Adjustable reamer. I got a bunch of these uh, die handles. Don't know the brand on them at all. This one is a Winter Brothers company. Not sure on that one. I'll have to wait here. That one's a Butterfield and Company. This one, I think I have one like this. This one looks to be missing. One of, or maybe it's just not tightened in. I think my other one has four in there. Or five, I mean. The four. Can't read that one yet. See this, another one that I have no idea on. And this one, this one kind of looks like a little giant. I got a few. Yeah, it's, it says little giant right there on the die. A lot of times the little giants don't say on them. They aren't marked or stamped. You have to tell by the dye that's in them. A few more handles. Excited about that. Uh, thread chasers. There's another uh, wood plane. Old wood one. Another gear of some kind. This pulley is adjustable. So you can, depending on what you need, you unscrew this, the set screw, and you screw this out. And basically it allows you to use, put this pulley on something that, you know, you don't quite have the, you know, you don't have a pulley and you need to use one that fits whatever belt you have. That, that's what that's for. Handle for something. I like handles. I like reusing handles. An old, the, the super ratchet. So yeah, it's a Williams. Oh, sweet. Woodruff keys of all different sizes. They're a little rusty, but that's awesome. Those would be nice to have. I'll clean those up with some evapo rust. If they even need it, a lot of them might be stainless. 
They don't look like they have rust, they're just in rust, rusty dust. Sweet, whole box of taps. Never have enough taps. Do you think that lead hammer has been used once? Maybe just once. Huh. Makes me wonder what the heck they were beating on. Got a couple little aluminum boat props. Another pulley. Some grinding discs. And I go through a lot of abrasives when I'm doing these restoration projects. And so I love finding those because I use them. An Eagle uh, oiler. I love Eagle oilers. They make very, very good oilers, especially the old ones. These are for flat belts. These are the basically the uh, what you use to connect the two ends. File. Another another puller. The maker brand. Another bit. Pull up brace. There is a wheel dresser for your grinding wheel, and that's what those those uh, little round things go into. All right. Finally, last one. files some sort of a screwdriver of some kind screwdriver got the deburring tool sweet thread file yeah these are nice I don't have many of those I don't know if I have any actually might be the only one I've got. So, got some big, uh, bigger taps. One and an eighth. That one's a Butterfield. Beasley, one and an eighth. T slot cleaner for a milling machine or anything with a T slot. There's a reamer. Another T slot cleaner, a little bigger. Looks like a nice punch. Have to clean it up. Another tap. Do you center? Yeah, that's a center drill. Not too bad, not too bad shape. You end mills, punches, drills, piece of aluminum, the drift. That one's a stare it. I don't know what this one is. Let's see, I don't know exactly what this thing is either. This little one, can't quite read it. See, this is a Starrett. Outside caliper. And then there's this cool little Lufkin. Basically, it's got a bunch of charts on there, and I like Lufkin tools. They made they made very good tools. Been out of business for a long time. They've got some drill chucks. These are unique. I've never seen them. So they've got a socket end. 
They're they're both Jacobs. And yeah. Interesting. Another spanner wrench. Test some of the keys. Other chucks. Some end mills. Last but not least. Calipers. Don't know the maker model on them. Have to clean them up a little bit. They're both free. And then I have no idea what's in here. Oh my. A lot. Center of some kind. That's an end mill. All eaten up. Some sort of a sleeve. Tap wrench or a yeah, tap wrench. See, there's a, a die. Another one. Another one. Piece of high speed steel. A couple of these air, uh, these Milton quick change. Milton makes very good stuff. Another tap handle. There's a tap. Some punches. Another tap. And then mill. Center drill. Looks like there's some more Woodruff keys in here. Have to add all these to that uh, other box of them once I get them cleaned up. You go to the store to buy a Woodruff key, and they're like anywhere for from you know five to fifteen bucks a piece and even more than that for me having this kind of thing here in the shop is worth more to me because the second that I have to leave here to go get materials or parts for a project it's over I'm done for the day I don't have to go far it's only like 10-15 minutes at most but you know, life happens. I go inside, you know, I've got other things to do, other things happen, and so having materials and parts for projects on hand is a huge help. And it makes a big difference on productivity for me personally. Well, I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me on the journey and seeing where I find this old rusty iron. Um, I really enjoy going out and discovering it and finding it, you know, buried in a backyard or in some barn or wherever. And so, if you enjoyed this format and you really enjoyed this type of video, please let me know. Let me know in the comments. Please like the video. Um, even if you don't normally comment, let me know. It, it really does help me make decisions based on the, what kind of videos to put out because, you know, I've got a lot of different interests and a lot of different things that I do that I think a lot of people would really enjoy. Um, but as a creator, you got to really try and find what people want to see. And the only way for me to know that is for you guys to let me know and to watch the videos. So I truly appreciate that you've watched my videos. appreciate that you subscribe. appreciate that you support me and Salvage Workshop here as a channel. So thank you again for coming along. And I look forward to all the other crazy projects that I've got coming up. You guys have a great one. I'll talk to you later.